Hey folks, uh, this is episode two of the Duskfall Circulation War. We are playing Blades in the Dark, um, and uh, my name is Ben Sherry. I'm a game designer and the GM for tonight. My pronouns are he, him, and this is my beautiful cast all around me. Uh, Alex, would you like to introduce yourself first, and then we will do the normal cadence, which I forget what it is. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so, hey, my name is Alex. You can find me on lots of things, either as JJM or Silvios. Um, my pronouns are they, them. Uh, current projects I'm working on is something I've just actually started yesterday, which is a bunch of um, interactive poem stuff that I'm doing with Twine and Ink. Um, and then I'm also working on, still working on the Magical Space Human uh, project, which will be very fun. It's kind of like an interactive visual novel thing. And yeah, uh, often I stream, I'm on a bunch of uh, communities, uh, gaming, like really positive, healthy gaming communities for a lot of Australian New Zealand residents. And I am glad to be here. <laughs> glad to have you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think Brandon, you're next. Is that, and then we go Lavender I and then think, Melody? I hmm. think so. Awesome. So, okay. uh, hi. Sounds legit. Hi everyone, <laughs> Brandon, um, poet. Uh, speculative fiction writer uh, working on design right now. Um, lots of things are happening on my end. Uh, uh, so I, I can only summarize by saying I do a lot of things and my pronouns are he, him, or they, them. Cool. Thank you very much. Lavender, good to go. Hey, I am Lavender, also known as Dark Lavender Void. I go by they, them. Um, I would like to start a tradition, which is where sometimes instead of shouting things out, I will file grievances with things. <laughs> I would like to file grievances with game design related brain mush, with <laughs> Homestuck invading my mind in oh, the year no! 2018. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> wow. Oh no. Started and have gotten to Act 6, Act 2. <laughs> I'm going to pick on that. In 2018. I didn't. <laughs> if only I had lived my life in the right order, I would have had so many more friends in high school. But <laughs> oh, here we goodness. are. I've destroyed my own life. This is why we file grievances instead of do shout outs. <laughs> Melody, That's fair. would you like to shout out or file a grievance? <laughs> um, hmm. There's too many grievances I could file, so I'll probably um, skip on that one. Uh, but if you want to hear all about it, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm Melody. Um, I'm Magic Space Girl on Twitter. Uh, she, her pronouns. Um, I am a games designer player, writer, person who's on the internet a lot, I like shit posting, um, and I've got a huge butt. <laughs> that's my thing. I love that that's how you always end these. It's, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, so just for, for a little bit of housekeeping for, for everyone watching at home, uh, we forgot to do XP at the end of last session. We, we didn't do uh, the normal XP uh, for crew and character. Uh, we individually have done our character, like we're off stream, we, we did our character XP, but we wanted to come back in and as part of the recap uh, of last session, do crew XP. So we will do that before like the, the session starts proper. Um, so does everyone want to open up the Keener's Hawker sheet? <clears throat> On the way. And I will swap us over so that stream can see. Yay. Huh? Cool. Alrighty. Uh, so let's look at our XP triggers here. So at the end of each session, uh, each of, uh, for each of the following below, we mark one XP or instead mark two XP if that item occurred multiple times. Do you folks want to go through and read out? There's four there, which is excellent. So uh, one of you can read out each and then we can discuss 
how that thing manifested or maybe didn't manifest throughout play and and we can go from there do you want to start alex we could do that yeah <laughs> i guess um so the first one is acquire product supply execute clad and sign for their sales or secure new territory wow um <laughs> interesting because i <laughs> I don't know if, like, okay, so what it says secure new territory? If they've got a pre established territory that they've only just introduced, is that technically new territory? Because it's our base, or is that just not included? Like, that's not a, because we're not really taking over anything. Uh, hmm, that's. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough, uh, tough point. I think because you are starting out completely, that it does count as getting new territory because. Right. Like, well, hmm. Okay, that's that's a tough one because you, you haven't necessarily finished acquiring that territory. You haven't secured new territory, right? Like, I think yeah. the, the key word there is secure. I think that you're in the process of maybe securing and maybe being in a really Depends bad how this mission place. goes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, now, what I do feel like we've done is acquired product supply because we've started, yeah. like, writing yeah. and getting um, a fucking huge and printing press for that's sure. That's true. And we stole yeah. the press. Yeah, yeah, yeah you stole yeah. the press. <laughs> so, I agree to that. That makes sense. Okay. Who's, um, who's ticking the boxes? Good question. Who wants to tick the boxes? <laughs> Just so we're not all like clicking the buttons. Yeah. I'm going to say not me because I'm supposed to be modding the stream. Okay. So okay. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll take a box. Cool. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, all right. So the next one along um, is is Brandon. I think. We cannot hear you. Yeah, we cannot hear you, Brandon. Not no. not the curse of the muting me again. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> we cannot hear you, Brandon. Okay, I think he's he's going to figure it out. I think I can figure that out from his hand signals. Um, so in the meantime, um, oh, that is gonna. Okay, uh, in the meantime, Melody, do you want to go on with the second one? <clears throat> oh no, you just had a bite. Yeah. <laughs> and no, it's all good. I'm all okay, good. I'm all cool. good. I, I, I ate quickly. Um, so contend with challenges above your current station. Um, I mean, yes, yes, but we haven't finished contending, but we started contending because we were like ripping <clears> off and like <throat> scamming and pretending to be like a they're level five, right? The Church of the Ecstasy mm. of the Flesh. I think there's six. In case you, oh my God. Yeah. Wait, listeners, in case you oh, have, they're have forgotten, they're our yeah, like gig that we'd started last time was we were pretending to be like a bishop or s and oh, an entourage of like the church of the ecstasy of the flesh dressing up as like slonishi like sexy priest types and giving away like sexy books to workers in a factory <laughs> that had like communist propaganda inside um yeah and they're a really powerful faction oh, we're at tier zero right Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Tier zero. Yeah. I so I definitely think we got that one. Absolutely. I one yeah. XP or two. I think two because remember we also stole the printing press from the ink crates. Ink crates. Are tier two. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're currently yeah, dancing on the turf of like factory oh, bosses I'm and really stuff. Bad foreman. So yeah. I yeah that's definitely a two. Uh, yep. you, you... We're we're rustling like a lot of feathers. Pretty much every feather yeah. you could ruffle at this point in time, you are currently ruffling. So yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Cool. So XP marked for that one. Yeah. All right. So Brandon, let's test out uh, number three. Please tell me you can hear me. We now. can. Yes, we can. Uh -huh. we can. Yes. Okay. Geez. <laughs> I don't know what this devilish thing is happening, but okay. Right. So. Uh, bolster your crew's reputation or develop a new one. Okay, so let's see. Your reputation is subversive. <clears throat> Discuss. I think stealing some motherfuckers' printing press is very subversive. Yeah. That's I think. 
It's kind of interesting because we already had this reputation of being kind of too socialist for the for the Ingrates, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know. I, I guess I guess in some way we're kind of from splitting away from that kind of like going in. Yeah, this is not a nice. We're, we're getting out of here. Kind of kind of bolsters that. It's kind of like mm. we're too socialist for you, and now we're going to prove it, kind of thing. But I don't. Yeah. Mm, like, I, I agree. Like yeah. we kind of we kind of proved ourselves in that moment to not only mm. be uh, so radical that we're going to leave, that we're going to take shit with us because mm. it's improperly being mm. used by your ideology. I think yeah. that counts. I do also, too. Yeah. We kind of made a big scene of it in the end, like knocked out a worker and like you had a massive fight with the editor, Brandon. Um, and also like, if there's anyone who can smear our name and call us subversives, it's the people who do newspapers. That's true. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, okay, so do we think one or so two for that? Two. One, no. One. One. One, okay. And we're doing well so far. Yeah. And uh, Lavender, are you up for doing the last one or do you want to keep on that Twitch chat game? I've got this. Okay. <laughs> um, did we express the goals drives inner conflict or essential nature of our crew? I want to say yes. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. I, I mean, that whole discussion about subversiveness. Mm. But also, like, I really, I th think the scene we had, the downtime scene, where we were, like, kind of debriefing and coming mm. down from that from that gig was, like, a really good opportunity to kind of, like, see what we were about as a group, but also, like, individually. And we, like, fleshed out our, you know, our layer and what was, how that worked and how that related to us mm. and stuff. I and we kind of like really establish our goal as well like we've really kind of like this is us now we are the new journalists we are the ones going to bring out the content that people need to see and i think that was so clear in that mm. time and now in our base yeah you barely laid low like you you, you didn't there wasn't a, an instance where you were like okay we've just Seneca got the shit beat out of her and then mm. you like yes, the I next did. day like you you drank through that and then the next day you're like <laughs> all right let's roll let's just do this so uh, yeah absolutely i think uh i think you that's so much drive yeah um i think that that's that's two that's my vote at least uh, if you folks so agree do I. Yeah. I also vote for yeah true um, sounds good we'd be very upset if it was just one <laughs> I, so I, we've just got all, all that six. cynical went through. <laughs> you got six, yeah, six XP. That's pretty good for out, out for a first session, yeah. Um, I I think because this group is so ideology based, that that one's going to be hit a lot, and mm -hmm. and probably two every session, um, mm -hmm. uh, unless something like really goes wrong. But even then, we'll be seeing that in a conflict. So. Yep. Um, so I, I like it. All right. So the the episode opens with um, we we actually get the the title sequence here. Uh, it's uh, I said it during session zero, and I'm sticking with it. So if you don't like this, I'm very sorry. But uh, we we hear the um, sort of the the progression and the lead up into the chorus of Paramore's hard times. Uh, and, uh, and this, this like booming, um, really upbeat music is played over a sort of, um, a sort of Watchmen style, um, parallaxing comic book side scroll through of, uh, the various different districts of, um, of Duskwall. And the, the beginning of each of these panels slides through is the sort of like idealized version of what that looks like. So we've got, you know, proper um, gentlemen and, and ladies and, uh, and like, you know, upper class folk uh, moving through White Crown. And then as it drifts over, we see some like upstanding good uh, blue coats standing there, you know, like tipping their caps to folks. And then just next to that, we see them pushing out... Uh, you know, homeless folks from White Crown, and we see them moving them on, and and then it moves through uh, the the night market, and we see everyone dancing and having a really good time, and then it moves into showing folks being um, 
being, you know, like treated poorly in the back alleys and being robbed and uh, folks being uh, exploited. And, and that's the kind of the whole theme that's going over. So this, this upbeat, high tempo music plays over the top of these scenes of what Dusk, uh, like Duskwall is supposed to be like, and then the scenes of what it actually is like. And the whole time throughout, like throughout all of this, we see those same leaflet papers uh, that we saw in the first episode fluttering down the streets and, and moving in the very like foreground of the parallaxing. And then they, uh, they seem to be like kind of going against the grain. Like if everything's playing out in normal time, these things seem to be going in the reverse. And finally they flutter up and sit back down on top of the printing press and then the sheet gets pulled off the printing press and we see that shot from the first episode of the hard times copper plate laid down in the printing press with the whiskey pooling uh, between all of the the letters. Yes. So and then, good. yeah, then, then at the, the final beat of the chorus, it goes to black and then comes back on the, the scene where we left it. So if, if you folks remember where we left it was that you were inside one of the the workhouses in uh in Coleridge and you had just convinced the the foreman that it was it was all okay for you to be uh for you to be selling your uh you you were hiding it as being like state sponsored smut, right? That was like Veronica. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was the that was the plan, like and that's how you were uh, floating it. But, mm -hmm. so you, you had just succeeded on that and, and the pamphlets were being handed out and inside these, these state-sponsored smut pamphlets were secret pamphlets. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, they were like supposed to be like advertising that you were not back in business because they didn't know that you were out of business, but that you had changed and become... Uh, independents, right? Independent writers and journalists outside of the the scope of the ink rakes. Mm -hmm. So, and I think were we yeah. like it lo were we launching an attack on the really hated guy, or were we just more kind of introducing ourselves? Uh, I the think, really hated yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, what's what's his name? Um, does anyone have down? His name. Uh, I've got the book here. I've got uh, my... Master Slain. Master Slain. That's right. That's a t yeah, that just sounds like a bad. Yeah, he I'm sounds like a bad dude, dude oh. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so you're also doing a bit of a hit piece on Master Slain. So yeah. we we saw that we see that inside the workhouse, and it's it's very much that Peaky Blinders style, <laughs> just front opened. Um, with the the weird fire that keeps belching out onto the streets and all the workers uh, in, and this is a place that stamps steel it's it's in the ironworks they stamp steel and mold it into place to uh, fix the hulls of the Leviathan hunter ships so we, we see folks doing that and now like being given these pamphlets and the camera pulls out and replays the the same scene as the very end of the first episode where we see um, from the leg uh, and then trailing up to the shoulder and just the um, these like hyper red uh, lips of the the priest of uh, the Church of the Ecstasy of the Flesh. And if you folks don't mind, I, I came up with a name for the priests of these um, of this this cult uh i think that they should be called jubilants so like you would be mm, jubilant yeah. x right um that sounds cool yeah you're happy with that okay it fits okay i'm yeah. uh, i'm happy to keep jubilant then um so we we see this this smile creep up uh and the the figure then starts striding towards uh striding towards the workhouse so what do we see all of you doing inside um, I had the cart, like, with all the books and, oh, sorry, all the magazines and stuff in it. Like, mm -hmm. I was meant to be the kind of servitor, like, um, so if I remember correctly, was there, like, a walkway above and someone was up there 
and others sort of slid down on the factory floor? Yeah, I or think so. Or have we moved past that? Mm -hmm. I, no, I, I think that's where we ended it. Yeah. If um, I recall correctly, it was just me and the form me, Foreman, and someone else was upstairs on that. I think it was me. It was, yeah. We yeah. were both dressed up, and we were on that top bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And then Stavril um, and Sabine are downstairs. Stavril's got I, the cart, and Sabine was the one handing out. I think if we've been given like a um, like a, a nod or something from above saying it's okay to give a head, I'm probably like taking things out of the cart and assigning the hands now. Okay, cool. That sounds, that sounds like something I would do when I kind of, when I've realized that the situation is okay. I've just kind of put my thumb down, kind of like, yeah, we're good, we're good, everything is fine. We cool. totally pulled this off. Ka -ka, ka -ka. <laughs> okay. So, so start, just start coughing at the signal. <laughs> So folks like are, are taking taking these pamphlets from you, um, and uh, I mean the the workhouses are because you know the the time period it is the workhouses are filled with um, with adults as well as children. Are you handing these out indiscriminately, or are you yeah. handing them to specific yeah. people? Okay, so just I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like oh, okay, no, you know what? I'm like. I am absolutely handing them out, but hmm, I'm just gonna look at what s stats I have before I commit to this. Uh, oh, I do not have finesse. Um, so no, I'm just, yeah, I'm just handing them out. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. I was gonna say I'm like taking packages of them and like putting them under things, but I am not subtle enough to pull that off, I think. All right, I like it. Uh, what are you doing, Stavril? Um, I think I'm, I think I'm, like, on lookout. Okay, so you're, you're, like, standing next to the cart and just, like, keeping an eye out for everything? Mm. That mm. makes sense to me. Okay, um... Maintaining the air. Yeah, so, so you'll probably notice the, uh, the jubilant standing outside in a few moments. Uh, so we'll just, we'll see what everyone else is doing and then we'll, we'll pan over to your view when you, um... Lock eyes with the jubilant. So, uh, Seneca, what are you up to? What aren't I up to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if if we if we just want to remind everyone, Seneca, like m moments before uh, the the episode ended, hit the the foreman with an incredible improvised speech that was uh, <laughs> very seductive, and and. Uh, and then played I, super coy afterwards. Yeah, right. I, I used to, but just broke this guy's mind. Yes, um, that's right. Uh, yeah, you shattered I his... Wonder, I wonder, <laughs> yeah, I wonder if... Uh, uh, it's kind of interesting to see how he's going right now, because I wonder if this is my point to say, uh, well, if you excuse us, we've got some work to do, if I try to bail out and how this, how this guy is going to react and what you kind of want to do here. Because so I don't know how uncomfortable mm. <laughs> the speaker is. To this, this point that we could see this guy kind of probably go for you oh well i feel i feel like seneca is the kind of person who at this juncture is willing to just accept whatever takes place and okay. like unless unless things get like mad violent like I just let it be it's it's it's, it's, all, a good it's all it's all going according to plan mm, mm. so far <laughs> okay. as far as we're we aware the foreman's the only person we need to worry about, right? Yeah. Thus far, yeah. Far yeah. Thus mm. far, yeah. In fact, um, Seneca, like, at this moment, at this precise moment, because Adrian, she was, like, leaning over the uh, railing of this, like, high platform that we're on. Mm -hmm. uh, he just, like, very, very subtly uh, tilts her head enough that she could, like, catch him out of the corner of her eye and that he can see that she's watching him i want to know how he's responding at that moment <laughs> okay yeah so i think he's still um unsure just he, he he seems to be completely unable to take his eyes off you i mean he's trying to get back to work because he's been like you know 
oh yeah yeah you can do that and i'm 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 gonna go back to work and do my actual job but he is unable to keep his eyes off you like he, he keeps going to do whatever he's doing and then like looking at you out of the corner of his eyes and so, like kind of doing the one of these ones right you know like looking at you out of the corner of his eyes and then unconsciously just like slowly turning to look at you and then catching himself and like going back and busying mm-hmm. himself and being like you know so he's he's a bit just trapped in that cycle oh, um, sweet summer child yeah <laughs> this uh i want yeah i want so i want so badly to just like ask like almost in a manufactured kind of childish voice i just want to ask him how often do you spend your time here absolutely alone unsupervised without anyone to <laughs> interrupt <laughs> good lord <laughs> um, uh he oh okay so because you made him like really uncomfortable but he's he's obsessed but in a like in a not necessarily creepy way that's how we left it like he was kind of he he wanted to unpick your mystery but you were you were like really playing with him and really dancing with him so like he he doesn't understand he, he doesn't really know how to respond and he he blushes um and i think he he's just like really flustered and he he stumbles through an excuse and sort of doesn't actually end up saying really any words and that gets him to like go away like he he's He's found some business that he needs to do out of here, right? Like he 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 fumbles and and steps off the um off the catwalk into like one of these little like office things, and you can hear him like loudly in there, like ruffling around papers and like opening and closing drawers. And he's probably not like actually doing any work. He's just being like, I don't know how to handle this. I'm <laughs> I'm stuck. You know, just like doing actions um uh. and downstairs uh we we see so that the, the camera goes down uh from from this like and what seeing Seneca like smirk at at what she's done to this this I'm dude i'm definitely blushing at this point yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I is uncomfortable and blushing yeah um so she so caused like, these two <laughs> folks to just blush yeah <laughs> Um, and then, then we see several. I just several. turned to Kane and I grin very widely. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm just sitting here like... <laughs> 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 like, I'm very just like, I cannot believe this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, so the camera goes down and we see, we see Stavril's, uh, face. And Stavril's, like, looking out on the, the street. And as you, like, as the camera sort of pans around and reveals what Stavril can see... That's at the same point when Stavril notices who's standing across the street and and striding very quickly towards uh, towards you. So now we've actually got like a full shot of this jubilant. Um, they have like uh, almost like coal black skin. They are completely androgynous. You 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 cannot tell um, like really anything about their their person from the way they they look right in front of them. like they're just utterly unique to your eyes they've got very um very wide hips and very long legs but they move with this like languid almost panther like stride through uh through the street where you know it's it's a relatively busy street there are um carts going back and forth with people up going about their business but they move just like liquid around these people and the people are, like themselves sort of just move around them just getting out of their road and not really making eye contact with them and just being <laughs> being not in their way right they've got the um these sort of rolled corded red i guess ropes um, down over their shoulders, which crisscross around their stomach and around their back, uh, and then go down into those split, I guess you would call them, um, like, 
Uh, what, what are they called? Like the those really loose fitting and then bunched uh, at the the knees, sort of like pajama pants, I guess. But they would be made out of like a silk or a satin, um, and uh, they they move. Um, they're completely bald, uh, and they've got these startlingly red, yeah, harem pants. That's the one, uh, and they've got these startly, startlingly red lips, and um, they lock eyes with you and are moving in this liquid way through through the street. What do you do? And you you definitely know that they're a jubilant, uh, and you know that you are standing there in stolen uh, <laughs> Church of the Ecstasy of the uh, Flesh clothes as are your two companions upstairs. What respect would I be expected to afford a jubilant as a preceptor? That's a good question. Let's find out if you know that. Um, so I think if, if that's if that's what you're planning on doing, if you're planning on addressing them and trying to address them correctly, uh, I think we will just roll that straight into a, a role when when they get like sort of in your face right uh, so they're mm-hmm. striding up to you and they they pa- pass that like burning fire explosion machine that is there for no apparent reason uh, and they they stride into the the factory floor and the folks on the factory floor do give them that same that same kind of avert their gaze avert being near them mm. feel and that's something that n- n- none of them did to any of you right like there was there was no that they didn't react in the same way to you folks not and that doesn't mean that they shouldn't have right like that they they probably should have reacted in that way but they didn't um and the jubilant strides up to you and straight away I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, like basically push a a condition on you because before you can like get out anything, um, before you can uh, address them, um, they say, "I wasn't aware that we were working on this street today, Princept. Exactly, what are you doing here, in?" those clothes with that cart and, and sh- like they're just boring into your your eyes like they're they're absolutely not giving you a chance to respond to any of their questions and just hitting you with question after question evidently trying to just completely put you on the back foot here what do you do i am going to just take in all their questions and see like the game here that Stavril has to win Mm -hmm. is the method acting in their own head Mm. Mm. okay so so you if you want to uh, are you planning on taking in all of their questions and then being able to answer them yeah, because I like I can't answer questions like even if I am a preceptor, I can't answer questions that I don't know yet. So I have to hear the questions first and I can answer them after that. Sure, sure. Uh, I think though, like what they're what they're actually like trying to do here is essentially blather you to the point where you are unable to unable to like join together co- a coherent answer to all of their questions. So that's essentially what's going to happen. You're going to get to the point where you need to respond and you're going to have forgotten the first like 20 or so things they said, right? So um, I think if you want to be in a in a position where you can actually like coherently respond to them, you're going to have to resist mm-hmm. uh, resist this first essentially like you know verbal assault against you even though they are acting very cordially and and uh not they're not acting politely but they're they're not acting in a way that anyone would say is rude at least not to their face Mm -hmm. so 
Um, what happens if I don't resist? If you don't resist, then they're going to essentially like steamroll through you here and know that you are know that you're like absolutely beneath them. They they will disregard you. They you because you will be like spluttering and being like, oh, what we're here for? Um, the the clothes and you know you you won't be able to string together a coherent thought. Um, and essentially you will lose the opportunity to act on this person and mm -hmm. they will also lose any semblance of respect for you. They won't consider you an opponent. It's, it, yeah, mm -hmm. basically you're the first line of defense. And if you can't resist that, that, you know, this puts the rest of us kind of like, oh shit. It's Very really exposed. Yeah. yeah. Is, is, is yeah. this happening like all inside the factory? Like, is yeah, this, yeah. I, this is on the factory floor. So, um, so if we've got like, mm. we've got the two tiers of the factory. We've got the factory floor and then the catwalk above, and yeah. um, you are elsewhere on the the fa factory floor, probably within eye shot of this, but not so close that you would be able to hear over the din of the uh, the factory. But you could definitely see this jubilant. In fact, yeah. like, yeah. it's impossible to kind of not see this jubilant when they are in a room. It's it's that okay. kind of weird, like weird effect that no matter what, someone can always pretty much see the jubilant wherever they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, hmm. Can I can I resist on behalf of? How do you I, propose you would be doing this? Yeah. I want to like cause a distraction, um, <clears throat> uh, which I reckon would be. Um, Hmm. I think uh, I will. Hmm. Okay, so I'm like I'm like moving this cart around, like you know, handing out these packages, uh, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to like accidentally like knock over like a a big metal rack or like a thing of machinery or something and cause like a loud noise and like a bit of a scene. Uh, okay. and my intention is to re resist with prowess. Okay. I think that makes sense. Yeah. So you're, you're purposefully making a big noise. And I mean, this is going to have to be a yeah. big noise, right? This is a, a loud yeah. factory. <laughs> so this is probably going to be like an industrial accident kind of thing, right? Like you, you yeah. have to knock over a big pallet filled with hull plating. So, this will, you know, have knock-on effects. It's it's not a good thing necessarily to do, but but it, it can it can thwart the jubilant uh, in their footsteps. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, as long as you have met a resistance on your behalf. Sorry, were you going to say something? Um, uh, no, I don't think it's super relevant here. I kind of wanted to have a discussion about something that I haven't mentioned that I wanted Kane to be really in tune to. Um, mm -hmm. because of kind of the whole whisper thing, I haven't had an opportunity to explore their abilities, but something mm -hmm. I had been thinking of before the session was that Kane is particularly adept at kind of sensing fear and anxiety in others when it's pushed, when it's kind of pushed, mm. um, only because they're kind of used to talking to the spirits. They're used to like instilling that sort of fear amongst them and what they do to others. So often like kind of in everyday presence, if someone is super fearful or anxious, they kind of get the inkling that they are. And especially if they know that person, um, but I didn't like, I wasn't going to be super relevant in this situation, but if potentially the, the resist fails and, um, several so was very, very anxious, I'm going to pick that up from a distance okay. away. So, um, but I, yeah. Have, yeah, I don't know if that's pretty, if we wanted to discuss how that would work in its limitations as well. Yeah. I, I mean, when it, when it manifests, I think we can talk about how yeah. that would, um, how that would play mm -hmm. out. Uh, I think though, this kind of distraction is enough to at least make the jubilant not they, I, I mean they're, they're not going to um be impressed at all obviously they're not going to be impressed by anyone who is acting or not acting at the moment but they're not mm. going to be you're going to be go back to sort of like a, a clean slate here they're not going to be assaulting you anymore several so i think that this this resist just works right and let's see how well your uh your resistance uh role goes um, so if you want to roll prowess there, Sabine. I'm pretty sure oh, that's a frozen, frozen, frozen. Oh no. Um, yep. okay. Yeah. So Melody has frozen. 
um, and and is is just dropped from the call for a moment, but uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Um, okay, uh, should we should we roll on her behalf? Um, I think so. Okay. I mean, she's expressed that that's okay. If someone else wants to act instead of me, go for it. Okay, no worries. Um, I will do a quick uh, prowess roll. Um, so this is... They have one. Um, I, I won't do any devil's bargains, obviously, because uh, Melody is not in a position mm-hmm. to um, to say. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see how that went. Oh, wow. Okay. Melody, I rolled two sixes uh, for oh. your, your prowess <laughs> re- uh, resist. So um, you perfectly resist and uh, recover one stress. So, um, so nice. <laughs> Um, uh, there we go. So, okay, I think how this manifests is we see, um, we see Sabine, like, get, get near a bunch of the, like, a big pallet, uh, maybe someone's, like, pushing a pallet nearby, and, uh, Sabine's handing out the, um, the pamphlets, makes eye contact with the jubilant, well, not eye contact, but sees the jubilant, and then... The plan really quickly comes together, and they back into uh, this this pallet on purpose, and the whole thing slides off and and shifts into the side of the um, the churning machinery, and the like different plates of uh, of the steel slide off and then get jammed in the machinery, and there's this instant like popping sound of uh, one of the. Um, one of the cogs in the machine just getting completely filled with this this sheet of steel. And the whole thing just grinds to this halt. It's a belch of uh, of fire uh, from that front furnace, and then it goes still, it goes cold for a moment. And uh, all eyes turn. Uh, absolutely every eye in the the factory turns. Um, but because Sabine critted this no one necessarily knows that it was Sabine who did it, right? Like, so so Sabine's just kind of, like, standing there as well, and, and this whole thing has gone down. No one's, like, yelling at Sabine or anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. So the the jubilant is, like, has has completely forgotten what they were doing um, and, and talking to you about several. So you are in a perfect position now to like recover and set the tone of the, the conversation or whatever you want to do, essentially. I think I'm going to approach the jubilant and get very close to them and try to relocate our conversation to somewhere that's less in chaos so that we can actually have a conversation. Okay, okay. So you just sort of like tell them to to come away that like to to a spot that's um that's okay. Um, yeah, I think the um the jubilant like looks at you, um, sees like you know this chaos raining down to one side, and then glances at you and uh gives this small little nod and this smile uh, on their face um, and doesn't respond, turns away from you and starts striding up the stairs, uh, up the the catwalk. Um, Doesn't make eye contact with anyone who's who's on the catwalk. I mean, you folks can do things, uh, but they're they're planning on just sort of like essentially walking through you assuming that you will get out of the road and going to go into the foreman's office and then sort of kick the foreman out of their office by virtue of them being in this room, right? They're just going to take the room. That's, that's, you can sort of see their whole progression moving through. That's what they're mm. planning on doing. Seneca and Kane, uh, you both see this jubilant striding up the, um, the catwalk um, and you are dressed as, uh, lesser priests of, um, lesser priests of the Church of the Ecstasy of the Flesh. I believe that, like, jubilants are probably, like, one rung higher than, um, the princeps, uh, and then you've got the princeps, and then you've got, under them, 
whatever you folks are. Um, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely kind of like Kane at this point. As like I said, seeing the commotion, seeing this person walk up, and is basically fearing the worst. Um, probably at this point in their head, thinking, "Oh God, oh God, oh God, we're gonna be caught, we're gonna be caught." Oh my God, oh my God, and it's trying, trying to keep uh, cool for side, which is not working in the slightest, as we know from Precad Kane's previous attempts to keep things cool. He's not very good at it. Um, so I'm assuming when they're striding towards him, the best Kane can do, and this is keeping in mind that Kane was previously blushed and uncomfortable just before this has all happened. The, the only thing that Kane comes to Kane's mind, and it's his only thing that he thinks he needs to do, is someone who looks very important, and is in a comfortable position, and doesn't know what to do, is to literally just, uh, and just immediately bow. <laughs> like, that'll solve all problems as long as I'm respectful. <laughs> I love Kane. <laughs> yes, yeah, same. Uh, Alright, so you, you bow real quick, and uh, the, the yeah. jubilant sort of just moves in that weird kind of liquid way just around you doesn't touch you but gets as close as they possibly could without touching you um and also Very not registering now, you if yeah was <laughs> if Kane was watching Kane is like completely red faced <laughs> um and and Seneca just so that I can get like this shot how tall are you huh? I think you you are muted again Oh no! No! <laughs> oh goodness! Unfortunate. I think there's something to be funny said about like Kane being like six foot three and just kind of like tumbling over themselves trying to balance. Oh yeah, just not even having any of it. It's just not even not even acknowledging Kane's presence, but somehow hyper acknowledging Kane's presence. At least Kane feels that way, so that's mm. why they're in the face. Yeah, because Kane is sitting... big, right? Yeah. Yeah, Kane is like, like very, like kind of, kind of like a big stick, like a big log. That's that's a good way of describing it. Right. Very, okay. Very yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> very very tall. Very kind of like this all the way. Mm. Um, kind of above it. And like not, not very well built because Kane is not like that kind of person. Um, mm. But it's just like sheer nature of being so tall and so yeah. So it's very kind of like when they bend, mm. it's a lot of presence bending. <laughs> mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so so I think you would be maybe slightly taller um, than the Jubilant, actually. Um, but the, the Jubilant, I would say, would be, you know, in their um, mid to low, uh, like six foot, maybe six foot three or four, um, very toned, um, a like a very muscular chest and, uh, and stomach that you can see. Uh, you can't see their legs, but you would assume that they are likewise quite uh, muscular. But they're lithe, right? They're they're that cat kind of moving instead of you know like a they're not massive, right? Um, and uh, so they they sort of move languidly uh, around Kane and are heading towards Seneca. Um, Brandon, do we? Are you? Coming back to the world of the streaming. Uh, I... Just going to reconnect. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Brandon can hear us, actually. Brandon's not in the call at the moment. Mm. Oh, really? Oh, okay, right. No, no. All right, let's assume that, um, that Seneca... Uh, misses her opportunity uh, for action here and um okay. and the the jubilant like sort of weaves past actually hang on no that's that's let, let's let's leave Seneca because I really want to see what Seneca does instead let's go okay. down uh and see what Sabine is doing sure. in in mm -hmm. response to Seneca's gonna be back shortly yeah so we'll be back in a, uh, we'll be there in a bit so. okay no worries yep. um so also let's let's see we are playing blades where chronological order is is kind of meaningless yeah not a thing yeah exactly so, yeah um we're good yeah so what are you doing sabine downstairs uh, no one knows so, that you knocked over the stuff oh nice cool okay. um what so what did i knock over because i was oh right my you, you knocked over like a, a little cart oh, a big cart filled with mm -hmm. um a uh a big pile of of pieces of like finished machined ship's hull 
Um, and oh, they, they have cool. slidden off and gone inside the machinery of, of one of the big, like, stamping machines uh, and, and right. absolutely, like, push that to a halt. There's, like, popping noises and the whole thing uh-huh. is, is just a shambles now. Um, cool. Um, so it's caused a big ruckus. Yeah, absolutely. All eyes turn to it. You know, workers from, from all over are rushing to make sure that it's it's not going to explode and everything's going to be fine. Um, mm-hmm. the, the foreman has come out of their office and, uh, is now like shouting at people, like standing, uh, in front of the office, like sh- yelling commands at folks and no one's paying any attention to you because they didn't necessarily see that you were the one who bumped it and you're just yeah. the least important thing at the moment for them. Uh, so what do you want to do? Yeah. Okay, cool. I want to, um, take them, take a moment to, um, look into the like the crowd of workers um and see if i can identify someone who is like possibly politically aware or like a would be a for someone who clearly is not kind of not on board with you know the whole situation um someone who i might be able to like give a whole bunch of these things to and be like hey if we get kicked out <laughs> look look there's secret propaganda in it if we get kicked out like Oh, okay. Like, yeah, like a backup option. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I want to find someone... Like, I want to try and pick someone out of the crowd who might be able to be swayed um, mm. to help us out. Okay, well, let's let's have a look here. What... Um, you, you do have the good stuff. Um, does that mean that... Is that the one where oh. folks are already addicted to it? Yeah. Or is that that it's extra quality? Uh, no, it is. Okay, so when you deal with a crew or faction, the GM will tell you who among them is hooked on your product. One, a few, many, or all. Oh, nice. So, oh, really yeah. Sweet. I think that there are a few folks in here who are already, like, big-time readers of uh, mm. your old mm. columns uh, inside the um, mm. in, inside cool. the, the Ink Rakes papers. So, uh, yeah. Is there, like... Is- is it like a pin or something or like, you know, like a thing they put in the hat that like indicates maybe there was like something to do with the column, you know, like or a maybe there was like, or something. Maybe, maybe there's like a pin for the ink rates. Oh, cool. Maybe there's yeah, like a yeah. symbol of the ink rates oh. that like people wear to show that they're like enthusiastic, loyal readers. But then maybe there's also like one, like a variant on it for our column. Like a, maybe the mm. ink rates one is like a little like is like black ink and ours is red ink or something you know like yeah because if we already have the good stuff we've mm. probably kind of already established that we have an existing following mm. from there yeah 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 totally um okay cool well can i like I, you know basically get the make my way to one of these or multiple of these people mm-hmm. um and get their attention and like quietly just kind of lean in and um like flash the the actual contents um of the the magazines um and be like make sure these get out to people and just like like handing like if if they're buying it hand them copies yeah like, yeah yes. um okay so i think that the i think that That's it's probably like, like a young um let's say like a, a a young girl of maybe like 12 13 um and uh she's got her hair tied back this like she's she's definitely um a scob she's got this um almost like uh like this very strawberry blonde uh streaked through with red hair um hair tied back in a ponytail and she's wearing one of those uh stereotypical like uh oliver twist cap things on and and in the front fold she's got the the pin like tucked in underneath um and i i kind of like the idea of like the the ink rakes you know sent out a bunch of pins uh as some sort of like you know old campaign of theirs to be like you know drumming up support and loyal readers pins uh and folks who are, are loyal to you like black them up with like blue boot black or something like that to to show they're sort of more sympathetic to that uh that kind of thing um they're hardcore. Yeah, yeah, and and she's got one of them like tucked cool. in uh, to the brim uh, of her hat, and and you make eye contact with her, and um, and she she like locks eyes with you, 
and you mm-hmm. you show her the the inside of the the pamphlet. Let's mm-hmm. see if you can convince this girl that it's a good idea for to her be to our dealer. yeah to, to start hawking your own wares in the event <laughs> that you folks have to make a getaway. Yeah, cool. Um, is so this is a sway. This is a sway. Yes, uh, I have a okay. devil's bargain for you. Yes, tell me. Oh. Tell me. So if you do this. Uh, this girl who I'm going to give a name, uh, let's, let's call her Weaver. Um, uh, she is going to assume that she is like part of your crew and I love that, but like, you know, she's going to be enthusiastic about that. She's a fan, right? So, Mm. so she's going to be a little bit of a leak, right? And, and you can already You've tell that, much. right? You can tell that yeah. that's, that's like her eyes light up when you say that you're going to, um, that, you know, she's gonna, gonna do this. If, if yeah, things go well. you'll be helping us out. You'll be spreading the good word. Exactly, like. yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that. I can, there's no way I could say no to that double bar. Okay, cool. Cool, <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love um, this. I love this so much. It's like, it's just, just kind of just jumping. I hope that she jumps up. I hope we get a good enough role that she jumps opportunity to be that enthusiastic thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> same. Convince herself she's doing well. And for you to actually see that impact would be pretty fun. Mm, mm-hmm. Um, I'm just seeing if I have anything that could give me some kind of bonus here. I don't, um, I don't think I do. And that's fine. Um, Cool. Okay, let's roll this way. Wish me luck. Um, so, what's position and effect? Ah, yes. Good question. Uh, that is my job. Um, okay. So, your position here is. I would actually say it's controlled. Um, I, I, cool. You, this is a fan. No, people aren't paying attention. Yeah, people aren't paying attention. This is a fan of yours. They want to impress you. Um, and your effect here is um, because of that devil's bargain. Because it like. They, they want to do this. I'm going to say that your effect is great here. Um, cool. They, they want to do this, and they're going to do it if if they can figure out a way to do it, right? All righty. Okay. Um, I'm a double crit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never not going to be that lucky, I'm sure. Oh! Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, you just need to roll for all of us. This. You just need to roll for all of This is some bullshit. <laughs> I have definitely not learned how to hack roll twenty or something. <laughs> this is legit. You're seeing it here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think that that becomes um. Oh. What's what's about that becomes extreme effect, I guess. Um. So, so this, this occurs and, and then some, and then some. So. Does she like get her friends into it too or something? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. So, um, you, you hand her the, the pamphlets and she barely says anything. Like it's, it's mostly just excited squeaks and nodding, uh, assent that this is what she's going to go and do. Um, and, uh, she, she tucks a bunch of them. Uh, underneath her um, her little like grey coat and then uh, grabs some more fistfuls and takes like a bunch from uh, from the little cart that you're um, pushing um, and then she's just she's gone like she's she's out of your eyesight she has has disappeared somewhere into the rest of the factory um, before yeah yeah before like while I'm getting out of stuff I want to be like what's your name and like if she can actually not say something that's not squeaking I would yeah say, oh, yeah okay. so Before so she, yeah. yeah so so she's like uh, getting ready to run um and you you like <laughs> hold on what's your name uh and she she turns back um and uh grabbing the the edge of her uh her cap um just says weaver and like pulls it down and like in doing so reveals the pin a little bit more um and and then like scampers off um, and starts just like handing them out to to her other uh, comrades in the the workhouse. Um, so yes. like you've definitely achieved the this is a selling ground, right? Like you've definitely achieved that point. Now you folks just need to deal with the fact that a jubilant is stalking towards Seneca, uh, and what does Seneca do? Right. So what did I miss? 
Uh, nothing. Uh, no, we, we we paused the action on that, and then uh, we, yeah. we went downstairs. So, so, so yeah, you're basically, fine. Basically, they've just walked past me. I'm a bumbling mess of bent down <laughs> awkwardness, How and they're kind of going towards you. How tall am I in comparison to? Yeah. Did your volume just die? Please tell me oh, you can hear no, me. No, yeah, oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you, yeah. Jeez. It must have just cut Jeez. out for a second there. Um, we yes, got really that worried. happened. Yeah. I, just, I, wanted to know, I wanted to know how tall Seneca is in comparison to them. Yeah, so they're like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, how tall are you? Um, I'd say around 6, like <clears throat> just 6 flat. Okay, so they're they're a couple um, of inches taller than you. Hmm. Are they looking at me? At me? At me? Um, c- kind of through you. Like they they don't seem to be paying any attention to you, but their eyes are looking in your direction. And they're like making it to the foreman's office. They're not like directly. Yeah. They they're gonna t- essentially if you don't move, they're gonna walk into you. Um. And they're they're moving with uh, like that sort of stride as if they know you're going to get out of the road. I wait. I wait until like they're like directly in front of me. Okay. And I'm going to try to trip one. You're going to like trip the jubilant over. Mm-hmm. Okay, because because they 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 will walk to you and then get. Again, as as close as they possibly can to you, without actually being in physical contact with you. So they're they're like, you know, a, a centimeter or two in front of you. You're a few inches down, so they're like at you, and they just look at you like sort of boring into your eyes, kind of from this angle. Um, and uh, it's it's going to be tough to like trip them without them knowing. Um, but let's, let's see if you can. Um, so, so what's, what's your intention here with this trip? So I can kind of get the frame in. Are you trying to break their spell or? <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, oh God. God, how naughty do I want to be at this moment? I um, was just thinking you were going to Cause I was like. Be something really fucking naughty watching the normal. Right? Like, you know. You know in the movies where someone falls over on their back and then someone falls over them? Um, I want to do that to them both. I just knew you were going to do that. There's just the one. There's just the one sibilant. Um, and behind oh, the sibilant right. is... Uh, sorry, not sibilant. Jubilant. Um, oh. Behind the jubilant is uh, is Stavril, uh, sort of following up the, um, the catwalk. Yes, so I definitely want to do... I want to make that happen. Okay, so you want to trip them. You want them to trip. You don't necessarily want to trip them. You want them to trip over and then be in that kind of, um, like... That I just want to fall over them. Yeah, anime fall over onto them in the most awkward uh, way possible. Um, all right, let's see this. Uh, how do you propose you're going to do that? I with... think that's all this anime. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the anime. Yeah, I think it's every anime. <laughs> Um, what is that? Yeah, good question. Is that a, is that Prowl? Because I don't have Prowl. Is that Finesse? Um, I mean, to, like, to, like, to, like, to, like, successfully trip someone over so that they fall on you, I feel like there has a bit of Finesse to it. Yeah. So Are you suggesting with Skirmish? <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> I, I think oh, skirmish yeah. is inherently aggressive, right? So I, I think so that this I. is a finesse, right? Because you're not trying to hurt them and you're not, you're trying to get them mm-hmm. basically move their body into a cer- like into the circumstance that you want, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I think that that's finesse. I don't know. There's no purposefully anime trip someone action. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think this is a, finesse. The sad yeah. failing of this game. Yeah, sad failing, exactly. Um, we, need to, we need to bring in some of the rules from Girl by Moonlight. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure it has an anime tripping over seduction move. Whoa. Um, 
So, okay, so I think that this is a finesse. Um, this is a mm-hmm. just a straight-up desperate action um, because this could just go really bad. Um, it could not go anywhere at all. It, yeah, it, this this could be um, this could desperate. be uh, an absolute just awful circumstance. They're also incredibly well built and um, very graceful, very sure footed. So I think you actually have limited effect here. Um, you're more likely to make yourself look like an idiot than to be able to actually draw them to the ground. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Actually, you know what? You know what? I'm going to give you that option. It's either risky limited, or I will let you push yourself to make it, um, to make it, like, it, we, we can push yourself, we'll bump it up to desperate, and then uh, go standard effect. Because if, if you're doing it desperately, it will be more obvious that you are actually trying to, like, almost tackle them. How does that feel? I think, I think I'll do that. Okay. Um, okay, so just talk me through what do I click. Um, okay, so the push yourself will be for two stress. Like, okay. But I will give you uh, the die with that as well, because we're changing both. We're changing the um, position and effect there. So it's not fair for you to only get one. Um, so I'll let you get a bonus die from that. And um, oh. and then it is desperate standard, and you get one bonus die. Okay. I'll move over to so we can see how this goes. Desperate. Uh. And one bonus die. I'm, I'm just like... <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay, so you do it. You do it. Because um, it's a six, right? That's a full success. Uh, you do it and there's no complication. Um, so you... How do you make this look... like? Walk me through the process of what it looks like you tripping them without them thinking that you're actually tripping them, right? Because this is finesse. This isn't a skirmish. Hmm. Hmm. There are many ways that this can be done. Uh, But I'm kind of fond of... Because they're just, like, walking sensually past me. Uh, yeah, so essentially like the, at you, yeah. At me, in my direction. Yeah. So, I like the idea that their footing was absolutely sure when they lifted their foot, and then, out of nowhere, my foot just got in the way of their landing, and suddenly they're falling backward. Oh, okay. Um, and, like, I'm making it look like they brought me down with them, when really I'm just falling over them. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and they they land on their back and I like I land in such a way that um my hands of my hands and feet are literally like trapping them from moving out yeah. of my way. So, so that it kind of oh sorry, so it's kind of good, like good you, you wanna make it look like that they were trying to use you for stability to get back up, but you've just kind of gone with them instead. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, okay. I think they they fall back. You've you've got them, you know, in this anime fall, uh, as as Knox puts it. Um, but they are able to, like, they they move with the fall and they catch themselves. Um, so they're not like you know, back and head smacking on the um, on the metal grating. They they catch themselves and their their arm is still propping themselves up. And the other arm sort of comes up to to catch you almost. Um, as you are falling on top of them. And, you know, you, you land straddling this, uh, this person and they, they land on the ground, like, laying down, well, more sort of, like, you know, propping themselves up. And their hand, like, straight away grabs the back of your, your neck. Um, and, and they, they're just, like, you know, you're, like, this close to them on the ground... Um, and the, uh, the jubilant just says in this 
soft voice like there's a moment of shock on their face where they're like how the hell did i fall over like <laughs> that that's that i don't do that like that's that's not a thing that occurs but they very quickly recover because you've made them believe that they fell over themselves right so th they immediately try and impress upon you that they have done this that they have <laughs> brought you down in, into this embrace right um and um they say super close to your face um <laughs> it seems i have become distracted in the course of my work young one i think that perhaps is not the time though my better judgment has abandoned me at the moment and they're just sort of like pushing you into this state of of trying to be like you know i did this on purpose but at the same point in time maybe we should continue this later you don't actually know if they want to or not they're just trying to recover probably but um what do you do you you've got them in this circumstance now and f for them to save face they've made themselves like make it seem like they did it on purpose so what are you gonna do I want so badly in this moment to like, because they look, we're looking at each other in this moment. Yeah, very I close. To, like, as as we're already this close, I just like lean closer into them, and just as they think that I'm going for a kiss, I lean uh, to their cheek and then to their neck. And I'm whispering to them with like with my breath against their neck. This time can be any time that you wish. <laughs> You've given them your number. Um cool. Because okay. I want my intention in this moment. My intention in this moment is to coyly play them so bad that they're like, you know, we could just do it now. <laughs> No one's looking up. Fucking Kane is part of a fucking field out Yeah, so so Kane Kane's on one side. St Starvel's like right behind as well. This like this has just occurred and then in in like, you know, the two heartbeats that this has happened in, one of you like one of them has been like, you know, oh I did this on purpose, but now's not the time. And then you whisper down into the neck, oh no, it could be the time, it could be any time. <laughs> Okay, so so that is that is most certainly a roll um, because they're mm -hmm. they're planning on just like getting up, right? Just pushing you off them, um, not in a in a get the fuck off me, but in a I'm gonna go and keep doing what I came here to do. But let's see if you can like. I don't think it's possible for you to get them to just forego their job, right? Like I think. I think they're too professional, too good at what they do, um, to to let this whole thing slide. But mm -hmm. I do think that this is enough that you can essentially like make like shift their entire perception of you, and maybe do like a you know, yeah, we will save this for later kind of thing, um, and and take it from being this was a chance they don't know what they did, they screwed up to being oh okay, this is actually a game we're gonna. We're gonna keep doing this thing, um, and you know, if if that's what you want to do, um, I I am definitely. Um, I have uh, that's that was mostly my intent. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so I think that that's a sway. If you agree. I do. Okay. Cool. Um, and also remember, you did a desperate action earlier, so you can mark XP for that uh, if you haven't already. Um, oh. But, uh, your okay, I do have a devil's bargain for you. Mm. Um, actually, do, do I? No, I, that, the one Are that I thought sure of, you don't... yeah, the, the, the one I thought of doesn't make any sense. Because I um... feel like the very easy devil's bargain in all of Seneca's messes is, is Seneca going to be stalked? Bye. <laughs> Dozens of lovers. I, I, I was gonna say, like, maybe, like, 
it's that regardless of the outcome of this, afterwards the church like wants to recruit you. <laughs> like they're like, yeah, come with us now. We will teach you our ways. And you're like, no, 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 no. And, and they're like, yeah, that... yeah. Actually, I mean, hang on. Yeah, Hold no, on. go for oh, it, Alex. Say, like, it would be, it would be more like a promotion almost, because like, I mean, if we're going to assume that they're dressed up right, they're in the gear. That's like, hold on. Why are you in this position if you're so good at this? Well, I, I think, I think that that's like that's. That is the devil's bargain, right? So right. Th they are going to be so, like, they're going to remember this so well that they're going to go back to the cathedral and they're going to be like, how the hell haven't I heard of this rising up and coming, you know, priest in, in, in the church? I need to find them. I need to maybe promote them, take them under my wing, you know, that kind of thing. And then they're going to go looking Our for you and you're not a priest. Either right so like so like i think that that's the like they're gonna they're gonna you're gonna lodge yourself in their mind and they're gonna want to seek you out and you know continue this consorting so that's def like that's not gonna go away but they're going to remember you specifically and look for you in the church and therefore not find you in the church so they're gonna know that you were lying about being in the church but that isn't gonna sour them on you specifically that is your devil's bargain how do you feel so so again to be sure what we're saying is dozens of <laughs> individual members of um the church of the ecstasy of the flesh are going to look for me in the church not find me and then suddenly go like, stalking the streets hoping to find me and recruit me Maybe or maybe not recruit, but yes, that is essentially what's going to happen or maybe, here. <laughs> hmm, I am down for that. Okay, in, cool. Um, in, in my imagination, there's an alternate like way that this plays out, where like Sinica accidentally, like five years later, we see Sinica like actually wearing legit priest robes and stuff, and Sinica's like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just, I just showed up and like pretended I was meant to be here. No one's told me what I'm meant to do. <laughs> I'm yeah. really worried to say anything now. Yeah. The time jump is just me Absolutely. up. So my position is what? Um, <laughs> uh, I think that this is risky. I don't think there's ever a moment where you can be controlled when talking to, um, talking to a jubilant. Like, they're just too good at, at being in control themselves. Uh, so I think that this is a risky... Okay. I think that I think you've still got limited effect here because they they want to do their job, right? Like you you're you're playing all of the right moves so you don't have zero effect, but they are so much higher tier than you. Mm. This is what they do, right? Like this is you're you're playing their game and they're very good at their game, right? So so yeah, I think you're unlimited risky. Trade position for effect by going in for the kiss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Because the thing is, if I my 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 intention was leading to a kiss, but not on the lips. On the neck. Like her neck is her neck is right there. Yeah, and you are shorter, so yeah. Yeah. So. So are we gonna do that thing? Because I will do that thing. Desperate standard again. I'll take it. This is, this is <laughs> and, and don't forget to mark XP when you roll desperate. Yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be. Oh wow. Go so... with my luck. Roll with my luck. Apparently. Please. Uh, so this is desperate standard. Desperate standard one bone. Uh, yeah, one bonus die from the um, mm -hmm. from the devil's bargain. Let's see how you do. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, the best result. A five is a success. But. <laughs> Technically. Technically. What happens? Um. 
How badly does this go? <laughs> okay, so um, I think what happens is um, they've still got their hand on the back of your neck, right? Um, you say this, and we see, like, the shot from, from, like, showing their face. So we can only see the back of your head uh, and their hand gripping the back of your neck. Um, you say this... And we see their their mouth smile and their eyes smile, um, and then you you lay you know the the kiss on their neck, and the hand around the back of your neck just tightens and like really digs in like iron grip into the back of your neck, and and pulls you straight off them, um, and you you like sort of get lifted slightly into the air and then like stumble back and hit back onto the wall. You are taking harm from this. Uh, this will just be level one harm. They, they are actually, like, hurting you. Um, mm -hmm. But the smile hasn't dropped from their face. Um, and and so so you, you get wrenched back. You can resist that harm, obviously, um, if you would like to. Um, um, I don't think I want to. Okay, so take the bruised um, harm, which is fills up your second... Um, uh, second uh, level one harm and I want to point out that you being beat up already was not affecting like what did not play into this effect um, mm -hmm. they they don't seem to have made any like any point at all of the fact that you are like visually beat up right um, but they hurt you they, they pull you off and and you you stumble into the um, into the wall, uh, and then they propel themselves to their feet. Um, don't dust themselves off, but sort of resettle their their whole physique, resettle everything, and then turn back to you, um, uh, several, and incline their head slightly and say, "Excuse me for that." Shall we continue? Or shall we go to next? <laughs> so, um, they they uh, nod slightly and um, and point towards the um, the the office of the uh, the foreman, who is like now like down uh, downstairs going in and arguing with um, some of the the work crew. Now. I can see this being, like, this circumstance here, uh, I don't necessarily know if we need to play out this entire scene. Um, if, if you're happy to, I, I do think what we need to see is how you extract yourself from this, right? Because they, they, they no longer are necessarily suspicious that you're not members of the um, the Church of the Ecstasy of the Flesh. They are confused why you're here, because that, that wasn't, like, the plan. But I think Seneca has done enough to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, um, the Jubilant is, like, pretty convinced that you are members of the cult. Um, yeah. Uh, you get their name, by the way, uh, during this this conversation. Um, their name is Jubilant Melista. Um, I will. That's a I will, cool name. Yeah, I, I stole it off the. Uh, um, I think it was the leech sheet. Um, so the, a leech can be uh, a contact of of this this Jubilant. Um, uh, for for future reference, if anyone wants to change characters later on and uh, and become a leech, um, but uh, so that's uh, that's their name, and um, yeah, so so we need to see how you're trying to like extract you and your team from this. So what does that look like? Uh, what does how does Stavril attempt to do that? Um, I want to present a story that we are here um, because it's a little bit like undercover operation and 
a little bit the winds of fate sort of took us here. Like, I'm imagining the story is that we have some connections here with the workers, and we found an opportunity and we seized it. Okay, okay. So we it, had it's... a work break and that was it. Yeah, um, so it's a little bit more of like, a, uh, you're here because of circumstance. Um, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and uh, maybe Stavro will ask questions of whether, like that was good to do or if they were practicing the right judgment as a preceptor mm. Mm. to sort of defer to authority yeah yeah i like that that's a that's a nice tactic to um to go down mm -hmm. um so what action are you thinking this is um could be sway so Sway is is trying to bend someone to your point of view, right? Does it include like it lies? Consort? Yeah, Sway is lying consort. generally comes under Sway. If you're deceiving someone, it's usually Sway. But like, mm -hmm. if you're given that we now have some kind of like pseudo friendly relationship with this person for the moment, like it could be consort because you're like having just a conversation mm -hmm. with them, right? Mm -hmm. I don't I, think you're on a level to do like. Fair enough. Yeah, I think Rack you could. Here. Yeah, I, I think you could consort here, but your effect would, you would have zero effect. Yeah. Um. So you would need to push and and figure out how to, um, expand that out. Okay. Cool. I am going to consort. Okay. So let's say that how this is. is going to work? Um. Let's say that this is risky. Um because it, again it's it's not quite desperate you've you've taken the um the sharpness of this uh but you can never be in control when you're dealing with these folks um so it's it's risky and it's zero effect cool here's the plan okay i am going to now um establish something new about stavrol mm -hmm. that the only way that they can like deal with these sorts of social situations is by completely method acting and giving into this character. So I'm going to say that Stavrol is going to lose their, um, like they're going to start stop focusing on like the logical side and like trying to keep track of everything and just trying to get like the feeling right mm. so i'm going to um goddamn method actors <laughs> yep <laughs> um so what i think this might look like is uh trading position for effect and then like pushing myself to method act mm. okay because i'm going for this gambit of trying to seem like I'm part of the church rather yeah. than... Yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I like it. All right. So so that's to... Um, is this you pushing yourself to uh, increase your effect? Or yep. are you going to trade... Um, is this trading a uh, position for effect as well? Yep, you can do both. Yeah, okay. So... That means um, you take the stress, um, you bump it up to um, to limited, and then you trade in the um, uh, you trade in the desperate for standard effect. All right, let's see that. Let's see a a standard desperate consort. To highlight um, that sometimes doesn't come up in blade streams. You can actually push yourself multiple times for different effects. So you can push yourself for effect, you can push yourself for extra dice, and you can push yourself to negate a harm penalty. Oh, really? So what I'm going to do here is a sneaky move where I'm going to push myself for effect and for dice. Okay. 
Um, All right. That's so, a lot of stress. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a four stress move, but, you know, let's see. This might be the last roll of the, the job, though, so who knows? Mm. is being slow. <laughs> I know. Like, this, it's so tense. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Okay. Okay. So. Someone had to happen throughout the night. Someone had to. Yeah. Let's go to ad break. Uh, let's go to ad break. We'll, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Um, and, uh, I think that that is just a perfect moment to cliffhanger on. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll see you in, in, in 10 minutes, I guess. Um, or actually we'll see you at 8.40, uh, our time. So that's like just over eight minutes, um, at the moment. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, see you all in a moment. Ha, 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 ha.